for we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. We have been given the same Father God. And Jesus taught the disciples that when they came into the family of God through his divine blood, his Father was their Father. And when they prayed, he told him to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we also forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And in John chapter 17, Jesus is praying not only for his followers in that day, but also for us as well to be like him. The disciples have been trying to be like Jesus, but they couldn't become like Jesus by trying. We become like Jesus by trusting in the blood of Jesus, in his love, in his grace, to help lead others to salvation and to bless them. This is Jesus talking to the Father. I pray not that they should have take them out of the world, but they should have keep them from the evil. And that's in John 17, 15. We can talk to the Father just like Jesus did, because the Bible declares we are sons and daughters of God. If we wake up each morning with heaven on our mind, we are ready to meet the day. If we wake up thinking about our troubles, how mean someone has been to us, or how hard life is, we are already destroying the strength of the day that the Lord wants us to have. Let's behave in such a way that we will be making Jesus a great day. At the close of today, we need to know, Dear God in heaven, have I pleased you in every way, in everything? Have I been your smile to everyone you wanted me to witness to? Have you moved through my hands to touch each one you wanted me to touch with your powers? Have I said the things you wanted me to say to everyone I met today? And since we are a Christian, we should tell ourselves that we're not of this world then we won't worry about this world and what we're going through. We don't need to spend our days fretting about how hard life is and even forgetting that we have Jesus. When he said he would never leave us nor forsake us, we should, we should have known that life was never going to be easy and that we needed our Jesus' help. There will be a lot of valleys and a lot of hills to climb, but the time will come when Jesus will leap from mountain to mountain and skip over the hills with us in joy and gladness. Behold, he cometh, leaping upon the mountains, skipping upon the hills. That's Song of Solomon, verses 2-8. Jesus is even now leaping from mountain to mountain with his bride, and soon we will no longer have to go down into every valley that we once had to enter. We will just leap from mountain top to mountain top. And soon we will enter into glorious hours, glorious days with Jesus. And when this begins to happen, we should take advantage of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It has already began to happen, and the anointings of God will get much greater. For the joy of the Lord is your strength, in Nehemiah 8.10. We will have great joy, and we will have great strength. The joy of the Lord gives amazing physical strength, as well as wonderful spiritual strength. Joy also brings peace. When a heart is no longer troubled, it beats in rhythm with the Lord's heart. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. That's in John 17.18. Just like Jesus was sent into the world, the disciples were sent into the world, in Luke 9, 1-2. And he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he set them to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And Jesus gave the disciples the same power that he used to heal the sick and cast out devils. The disciples could minister just like Jesus. Do we want our hands to work for heaven just like Jesus' hands worked? Do we want our eyes to behold the glory of the Father just like Jesus' eyes beheld the glory? We must want to be a blessing just like Jesus was a blessing. And Jesus told everyone that he was the light of the world. Now Jesus is telling the Christians that we will be the light of the world just like Jesus was and is. In the Sermon of the Mount we find, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. It's in Matthew 5.16 The Lord is depending on us to be great witnesses of his light. People can see Jesus in us as we go about our daily life. And Jesus came into the world to take back what the devil had stolen from the human race. We're robbing the devil of souls daily by helping to bring salvation and healing to the people in the name of Jesus. We use the same great love that Jesus brought to earth. And Jesus will use great love and wipe away all tears. In Revelation 21.4 
and God shall wipe away all tears from the eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And in 1 Peter 2, 21, 22, tells us Jesus is our example, and we should be an example also for people to pattern after, so they can be just like him. For Christ also suffered on our behalf, leaving us an example, that you should follow his steps, he who did no sin, nor was gal found in his mouth. Would Jesus become our example? We're to be just like Jesus. To always please heaven, we should follow no one else's steps but the steps of Jesus. And then even when en route to heaven, we would dwell in heaven's greatness. Those love steps, faith steps, gentle steps of goodness and mercy of Jesus, they all make up the pattern we must follow. The steps of Jesus, what kind of steps were they? They were steps of a man who did no sin. Why would people say that no one could live free from sin? Those who are godly live free from sin on purpose. You can't be godlike and continue in sin. Lucifer and all his angels who sinned were cast out of heaven. People struggle in trying to find their way. But with Jesus, we know our way. We are to be fishermen for Jesus. How many souls have we caught for Jesus this past week? And people who never realized they could be truly saved are finding Jesus. Go and sin no more. Jesus said to the people he had healed, a woman caught in adultery was about to be stoned, and Jesus saved her soul and said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee, go and sin no more. He healed a man crippled for thirty-eight years, and told him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest the worst thing should come upon thee. Jesus never told anyone to do something they could not do without his help. We cannot live free from all sin without the help of heaven. We cannot be delivered from all sin without the deliverance of heaven through divine blood. And people are denying the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. No wonder they don't believe in living free. They have nothing they believe in to keep them free. But we who are born again have the grace of God to keep us. We have the divine love that the devil can't penetrate. We have the divine forgiveness for our sins. The blood has washed them all away. Thank God we are free. We can talk to heaven just like Jesus when we're free from all sin. And some Christians are always searching for the Lord. They can't seem to find him for their needs. Stop searching. We found Jesus when we found the old rugged cross of Jesus. We were connected with heaven that day. And we should never be disconnected. We can call heaven any time. Paul wrote to the church in Colossians saying, And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Do we feel free? Do, do we feel incomplete? There are people who would like us to feel like that. Certainly the devil does. He likes it when we're not content. And Paul said, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned, in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. In Philippians 4.11 When we're content with whatever state or valley the Lord places us in, the grace of God is there in the valley when we arrive. Instead of pining over our plight and wondering what we have done wrong, think of what we have done right for the Lord, that Jesus would trust us to go into such a valley. As we begin to look around in this valley, we see there is plenty to do. There are many lost souls to help and to witness to. There are Christians loaded down with burdens who need a helping hand. Do we spend time carrying others' burdens, or are we always looking for someone to carry ours? Do we complain to others about how hard life is? If so, we're focusing on the wrong thoughts. Take the faults of God. The faults of God bring good health to the soul, mind and body. We should make this our day. We're the one to set the time. The woman with an issue of blood set her time to receive a miracle when Jesus was here on earth. She was determined that she would be healed when she touched the hem of Jesus' garment and the woman was made whole from that hour in Matthew 9, 20, we can decide the same thing because that same Jesus is within our reach by faith, grace and love. We can touch Jesus and be made whole. You who are unsaved, Jesus is the one who died for you. Jesus will save you as you yield and pray this prayer with me. Dear God, save my soul. I know Jesus, that you died for me. And I know there's power in the blood to wash away all my sins. Come into my heart, Jesus. I believe the blood of Jesus washes away all my sins. And now I am saved. God bless you and keep you. I shall speak to you soon. Amen.